My dearly beloved in Christ, St. Paul begins today's epistle with an act of thanksgiving. I give thanks to my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus. And we can imagine how St. Paul, who traveled from town to town, places that had never heard the gospel before, and when he saw the work of the grace of God in the souls of these people and how they corresponded and were converted, changed their lives, what a joy that must have been for him and what gratitude because it is only the grace of God. St. Paul was the instrument that God used, but it was God's grace that brought about their conversion. And we also should give thanks to God. We should live in a spirit of thanksgiving, thanking God for the grace that has been given to us and the knowledge that has been given to us. Now, passing on to today's gospel, St. Matthew begins by saying that Jesus um, came back across the lake to his own town. So this event, this miracle, took place shortly after the Sermon on the Mount. In other words, early on in our Lord's public life. And he came down from the Sermon on the Mount. He preached for a while by the seashore. Then he crossed over the lake to the other side for a short time, and then he returned. So now he has returned and come to his own town. Well, what is his own town? This is what Cornelius Alapide says quoting the different fathers of the church, it was the city or the town of Capernaum. Now, Capernaum was located on the northern shore of the Lake of Galilee, and it was a commercial center, a crossroads. And so it was a very important town, and it was a fitting that our Lord, early on in his public life, spent the majority of his time in Galilee, that he would make that, so to speak, the base of his operations. And he goes on here, as Christ ennobled Bethlehem by his birth, Nazareth by his education, Egypt by his flight, and Jerusalem by his passion, so also he adorned Capernaum by his dwelling, preaching, and working miracles there. Many of the miracles our Lord worked took place there at this town of Capernaum. So today's miracle that is related is really a double miracle. And it is the story of a man who was paralyzed. And we can imagine the pitiful state. Here is this man lying on his bed, unable to move, having to be taken care of by others. And when he heard about our Lord, he had this great desire to go and seek for a cure. So he enlisted four friends. St. Mark tells us when he relates a story that the, the pallet was carried by four men. And they arrived at the house where our Lord was in Capernaum, but so great was the crowd thronging the house to listen to our Lord, so packed tightly together that they could not get in. So they conceived of a very ingenious plan. They climbed up on the roof, and they brought the sick man on his pallet, raised it up onto the roof, and then they made a hole in the ceiling or in the roof, removed the tiles or whatever the roofing material was, they made a hole, and then with ropes, they lowered the stretcher down right in front of our Lord. And you can imagine the astonishment of the people that were there seeing this, this slowly this pallet stretcher being slowly lowered down. And there's this paralyzed man now lying there right in front of our Lord. And our Lord looked upon him and said, Son, take courage, son. Thy sins are forgiven thee. Our Lord forgave his sins and then he went on to cure the paralysis. But when our Lord said, Thy sins are forgiven thee, the scribes started to say in, inside their minds, who is this that claims to forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. He's blaspheming. And as the evangelist says, our Lord knew their thoughts. 
And he said to them, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise and walk? And he says, so that you may know that the Son of Man, a title our Lord often used for himself, the Son of Man on earth has power to forgive sins. He turned to the paralytic and said, arise, take up your pallet, and go to your house. And the man arose and walked perfectly cured. So he was showing them that he had the power to forgive sins. Now notice, when the scribes were, were seeing this, were, were saying he's blaspheming because only God can forgive sins. And our Lord did not say, that's not true. In other words, our Lord was claiming to be what he is divine. And they understood that. And this was early on in his public life. Later on, they would take up stones to stone him because they said, because you, make, being a man, are making yourself to be God. So here, early on in his public life, our Lord put forth that claim to divinity by forgiving sins. Now, it is also interesting to note in this regard that the Pharisees had this idea, and the Jewish people in general, had this idea that if somebody was sick, somebody was blind or lame or deaf, whatever, that person must have sinned or his parents sinned that that happened to him. And of course, we know that is not the case. But remember the story of the man that was born blind? That the disciples came to our Lord, the apostles, and they said, Lord, who has sinned, this man or his parents, because he was born blind? And our Lord said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but it is for the honor and glory of God, meaning that our Lord was going to cure him and that that would be a demonstration of God's power and goodness through that cure. But notice our Lord's words, neither this man nor his parents sinned. So he's saying, in other words, just because some...